Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord and welcome to Line in the Sand. I'm Pastor Manuel Johnson and I'm here with David Andrade. I am, am co-hosting this with him and we are so happy to come into your homes right now. We are going to be talking and dealing with the glory and some powerful events that is coming up in the near future. And we want you to be a part of it. And you know what, Apostle David, thank you for allowing us to, to airing this program because I believe that many people are truly blessed by seeing the things that are going on in the world. We hear so much, and I've said this a lot, but we have hear so much of the media news, and it's not always appeasing and are pleasing. You turn it on, I mean, how can you get peace, you know, after listening to the media news every day? But we have news that are going on from the third, from the, from, from the third heaven, the kingdom of God. You know, uh, people getting saved, people getting delivered, signs and wonders happening in various places around the world. Dreams and visions are, God is giving dreams and visions to many people regarding who he is. And we have a powerful event coming up again, Line in the Sand, which the Lord used you to launch. And it's just, it's just like a domino's effect. You know, but we're not just talking about an event where you just have people show up. We're talking about the glory of God. We're talking about the presence of God. We're talking about a true repentance. We're talking about crying out to the Lord. And, you know, the last few weeks we have been talking about, when we've airing line in the sand, about the glory, about repentance, about things that are going on and that God is looking for us in an internal way, you know, that we should do. And... As you were talking to me earlier before uh, we aired, you were speaking about the glory, which is very powerful. Oh, thank you, my brother. It's very and, powerful. And I'm so glad you're here with me, and I appreciate everything about you and that you're, you've been with me, and we've been partners for a long time. I, I, wa I want to continue talking to you about the glory of God mm. and uh, even the beginning of creation that that when God spoke this word and this word had such power that it created everything that we see in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, third verse says that we know that everything that we, that we see was created by what we don't see, right. by the very word of God. And there's, there's some things that we miss. They're, they're through the scriptures and the pattern is always there. We see it even in the garden because there were choices made. God actually prophesied to Adam and Eve when he was showing them the trees. He showed them the trees. He said, in the day that you eat of, of this tree, you're going mm. to die. Mm. And so God was actually telling them, both of them, that there was something coming in the future that that they would partake of the wrong, they would make a wrong choice. And because of that, they would lose their position of glory. Mm. So when God created Adam and Eve, and he created the universes, he created them in love. Right. The very first thing that, that what uh, Jesus ta talking to his disciples and they're asking him, what's the most important thing? Mm. And God, and, and his response about God is to love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy strength, mm. and with all of thy might. And the second is, is the same, to love our neighbors as ourselves. Mm. And so we were created in the essence of God's perfect love. And, and God... It's God's desire to receive this love back. This, yeah. There's the, in the, especially in the English language, in the Greek language, there's different levels and types of love. But the love that God has for us, Hallelujah. God wants that love back. Mm. And he wants us to love him that way and love our neighbors with that kind of love. We were created in that kind of love. Since, you know, Apostle David, since you mentioned that, which is very critical in the body of Christ, you know, um, I've experienced love in the body of Christ, but I've also experienced a lack of love. And 
Is that love, and I, I know the answer, but I want, I want the audience to hear you say it. Is that love, loving the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, does that allow Jesus to heal us fully? Like if you have like a very lack of love for the Lord, does that limit him to what he can do for you? Well, anything that God commands us to do, yes, he's telling us that we have the, oh, there it is. There's the presence of God. I'm sorry. I just Hallelujah. really got hit. That we have the ability mm. to do that. Mm. But, but Jesus tells us also that we can't even see the kingdom of God until we're born again. Right. So God's restoring all things to where it was in the beginning. Certain things happened in the garden. God, God created Adam and Eve, and it says, and he placed him in the garden. That means he was, he was created outside of the garden and placed inside the garden. And, and when God created the worlds, we can't think that God made anything in imperfection. Right. It was... The, out, the outside of the garden was just as beautiful as the inside of the garden. So you're but, trying to say that Adam lived, Adam and Eve lived in God's glory. Well, God, God took, took them and put them in a higher place. Mm -hmm. He put them there to mentor them. Right. Because he had commanded them, given them a command to fill the earth with his kind. His kind was created after the image of God. It says... Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. And God said, let us create man in our image. And the image of God created he, him, male and female. And then it says he blessed them. And he, and he commanded them to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and take dominion. But God was mentoring Adam and Eve for that place. Their place was, uh, not, was to rule the earth. And to fill the earth, but he put him in, let's say, a second heaven place of thrones and dominions. We are called to uh, restore all things. Mm. God's kingdom is being restored through us. And he's restoring a kingdom of, of kings and priests. That is our first calling, to be kings and priests. To take rulership and to be in that place. But Amen. decisions are made every day, and uh, decisions are made even in our lives to either build the kingdom of God or to tear it down. It says within us is the kingdom of God. Everything that is needed is in us. Uh, in uh, Romans chapter uh, 8, verse 11, it says that if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead mm. dwell in you, mm. shall also quicken your mortal body by that spirit that lives in you. And so when Adam sinned, his spirit became dead. It was a dead spirit. Eve's spirit was dead. But God put together a covenant, made covenant with them to restore them <clears throat> to their, their original state and all of their offspring uh, that would seek after God. Wow. wow. And, and decisions on. were made in the garden. God showed them two trees. He said, he did. He showed them the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and he showed them the tree of life. Well, tell the viewers why he put those trees there. Well, the, the, uh, the if, tree if, of good if, and if, evil if, if was If he knew there they were going to sin. Because, because, Adam and, because God had cast Adam out of the third heaven. Right. And he was in a position there in, in the second heaven, and he occupied that tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You, but God showed him also the tree of life. And, and it was because they surrendered. First of all, when we love, when we love somebody with all of our heart, mm -hmm. we have a fear. There's a fear in us that says, I don't want to hurt that person. I don't want to do anything that would that would uh, offend that person. There was a fear that they were created in. It was part of the glory of God because that, that glory that encompassed them was a pure love of God. It, they were housed in that glory, but they made a choice in the garden. A choice was made that lacked love because if they had had that love, when they heard those words, they would have had the fear of God and they would not have turned to the tree of the knowledge. They would have set their eyes on the tree of life. We, wow. there, 
In anything that God creates, there's always a greater place. Their place was to partake of the tree of life, and they had never yet partaken of the tree. You, uh, the, so they could have got high. They could have went a higher level to a higher place. I don't believe uh, this is being uh, ministered in our poor pits today. Now I want to get this right so the viewers can kind of understand. You guys understand where Apostle David is coming from uh, because of his studying and walking with the Lord. So I'm going to make it a little bit more yeah, accessible that you would understand. Um, I want him to tell you in his own words. You're saying that. Adam and Eve didn't experience God's love. They lived in God's love. They didn't experience glory. They lived in the glory. They, they and, then, were, and then God wanted them to go even higher than that. They experienced. They experienced. They, their knowledge of God was an experiential knowledge. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can become so comfortable in something and yet not appreciate it. And, and when God had a third heaven experience for them a face to face he he met with them it says in the cool of the of the garden there was a time when in the rua it says the rua of the day in the spirit of the day in the coolness <clears throat> of the day there was a time when w they could talk to god at any time amen but it was god's time to have fellowship with them and and have, it it literally tells us that they had not eaten yet of the tree of life. Was, was, uh, the whole time they were in the garden, because when they, because they were cast out with these words, it says in the day that if they, were, if they eat the tree of the tree, they will live in sin the rest of their lives, and they would live eternally mm. in that sin. Mm. And, but God had, a, had something better for them than that. It was a third heaven experience. God wanted them to, but it was a choice. And that would have been the tree of life. That's the tree of life. And that tree puts God before anything else. See, God would not violate the will of Adam and Eve. He gave them a cho made a choice for them and told them, you make the choice, and gave them a choice of complete relationship with him, one that would, in, that would deepen even further, that love relationship, that glory relationship that, that they had with God. We need to understand that God, God's nature, mm -hmm. anything that God creates, he infuses his nature into it. Right. And his nature is love, joy, and peace. It's very interesting that, that the Paul says that, that the that the that the kingdom of God is love, joy, and peace. Because that's what Jesus talked to his disciples about before he died. We have to understand that God's talking to them about that second place experience, that, that tree of life experience, and then takes them even further into the glory. Is, 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 is this, does this parallel with um, the book of John when the Lord speaks to the multitude of people and we know talks about eat my blood drink my blood eat my flesh because we know that jesus is the way to life is that a parallel to that in the tree as we know in the book of uh, G, um, peter when he says you know crucified on a tree let's let's take a look at that for a minute because jesus reiterates about that at the last supper. yes yes he does and he says some very remarkable things. And unless we understand, because he's talking to them about love, joy, and peace. Mm -hmm. See, they didn't, uh, they didn't even understand love, joy, and peace. Right. They were living in the middle of the Roman occupation when every day they could walk down the streets and see people crucified on the roadway. The, the oppression and... They were in fear of, of death all the time. But mm. Jesus said something very inc incredible. See, when God create, created the third heaven, he created it for the angels. But, he, but Jesus says, and he's telling the, his disciples, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. You know who created the heavens and is preparing them? For the saints of God is the Lord Jesus mm. Christ. Glory to God. 
So we don't understand. He says, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. So where I am, you might be also. And I'm also going to send my comforter to you, which is the Holy Spirit. And he's going to tell you about all of these things. And he begins to re reiterate the nature of God, love, joy, and peace. You know why he talked about love, joy, and peace? Because they were living in fear of judgment. He said, don't worry. Don't fret that I'm about to be crucified because I, what I am doing is I am woo, opening the doorway. I am removing the obstacle in the temple. The curtain is, was a reflection of his body and destroying the wall between you and God so that you can go higher into that place of relationship. The Holy Spirit is all over this message, I got to tell you right now. So, so, he, so he, he, you're saying... David, that Jesus was referring at the, at the Last Supper, that he is the tree of life. Yes, he is the tree of life. He is the eat of me. He is, he is all in all. He's everything to me. He's, <laughs> he's everything I need. He's everything. Mm, mm. And, and so God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, is, has removed every wall so that we can have open access so, the, so the, the tree of life was open access to the Father. Mm, mm. So the, Jesus visited Adam and Eve in the garden. He even made the covenant. He was the one that cut the, the sacrifice in half. There was, the first sacrifice took place in the garden. Right. Religion began in the garden to cover up shame mm. and to because Adam and Eve were trying to make themselves worthy after they sinned, so they covered themselves up. But Jesus began it very quickly to show them that he was still there all in all, and he was going to make a way through the sacrifice. He is the one who cut the animal in half. It was probably a lamb, just like the lamb. It was probably something that they loved, a pet, Adam and Eve, a uh, had something that they loved and that they shared that it shared its life with them. And he took that lamb and he cut it in half mm. and he walked be between the parts. And we know this from Hebrews uh, chapter six and from, uh, from Romans that, and from, uh, and how a covenant was made, Jeremiah chapter 34, verses 18 to 20, that he walked between the parts and he said, this happened to me and more if I break one word of my covenant, and he mm. made covenant with them for redemption, that he would redeem them back. And, and then they had to be removed from the garden because God did not want them to partake of the tree of life and live eternally in the state that they were in. We'll be, God we'll made be totally away. Miserable. And that was the curtain that Jesus tore so that we could have free access to the Father. And that's what the tree of life was. It was, this, the, was the access to the Father. And Adam and Eve had that choice, and they made a different choice. And so they were, they were not able. And that's what Jesus is still doing today. We come into relationship with Jesus, but Jesus wants to take us beyond that all the way to the Father. He wants us to have relationship with the Father. Mm. And the only way we can have that relationship, and we can have that relationship, especially if you're born again, because the kingdom of God is within you. But you have to be born again. Jesus said that if you're not born again, you'll never see the kingdom of God. You, you won't see even see it. You have to be born again to see it. And it's living in you, just waiting to get out. It's waiting to take you over, to bring you into this relationship of a one-on-one -on -one with the Lord Jesus Christ and then a one-on-one -on -one with the Father. And the power of the Holy Spirit can bring you into that place. And so uh, what, what I want to say is that we, when God gave us the commandment, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, strength, and mind. And then you know what Jesus said? We look, at, we look at the scriptures, and I'm going to talk about the glory in, uh, in John chapter 17 in a few minutes. But, but every, you know, when we look through the scriptures, we see terrible things that happen. But Jesus said this. Mm. He said, and this is all the law and the prophets. 
church and yes, love did. the Lord thy God with all thy strength, thy heart, and mind. The, all of the scriptures is about the love of God. And love your neighbor as yourself. The, all of it is about God's love for us. And he's made a way. He just didn't make it for Israel. He promised it to the Gentiles through Abraham. And, and Abraham was a model of the blessing and abundance of God. Even when Abraham made mistakes, see, we, we, get, we feel this condemnation, but God's love and covenant is so complete that we lose sight mm -hmm. that God wants, is in love with us no matter where we're at. He wants us to come to a point of repentance and humbly submitting ourselves to him again so he can continually have relationship with us. And, and even when Abraham gave his wife to Abimelech, he still came out blessed. God gave him abundance, even in that case. A mistake, See, but God corrected it. Yes, but, but see, that's because our of his God. Love. Our God, his Abraham love, is mercy. a model of complete blessing uh, without the curse. Jesus is the model of blessing, that he's the giver of all the blessing. And it says mm. that we have the promise of the Spirit through Abraham. See, God taught Abraham how to have relationship, to put God first. When, when, the, when uh, the Lord was speaking to the angels when he was going to destroy Lot, he says, how shall we hide this thing from Abraham? Mm, that's right. Seeing that's right. that he will teach his children to know the Lord. So the word know there is an experiential word. And that's what it's talking about in Galatians chapter 3. Mm. And that's the relationship that the Lord wants to bring us into. In, in our closing right now, would you uh, close us in, and uh, invite people to I, receive I, this I, marvelous I, Savior of ours? I, I, I would love to. As we've been speaking to, today about the glory and the love of Christ, you know, Eve, that's even part of the prayer Jesus said towards the end in Matthew 6, the power, the glory, the kingdom forever. We want you to experience this love, but you can't experience it away from the Lord, but you, will, you can experience it coming to the Lord. And that is the Lord we're talking about. We're not talking about some religion, some man-made religion. We're talking about a true divine relationship with the creator of all heaven and all earth, all the universe. His name is Jesus. He died for us. He rose again. He took upon our sins. I want to say this again. He took upon our sins. There is no way that you could try to make it right with God. Only through Christ Jesus, only trusting in him and trusting in the bloodshed that took place some 2,000 years ago, recorded not just in the Bible, but also in other theologians and, and other men that are not Christians said this event took place. It was a, an event of all eternally history. And how do you can benefit from this event? By asking the Lord Jesus in your life. That's right. If you really believe that he died on the cross, as I did, as David did, as millions of people around the world have given their lives to the Lord and doing it right now as I speak, giving their lives to the Lord, coming from the darkness to light, having their sins totally forgiven and wiped away and, and enjoying a divine, truly unconditional love affair with the creator of mankind, Jesus. He loved you so much. The Bible said that he loved, God loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever should believe in him, whoever, whoever should believe in him shall not perish, perish, be separated from God eternally, but have everlasting life. Not what you see here. I'm going to live internally because I made a decision to make the Lord Jesus my Savior, not my religion, my Savior. And I made that decision some 20 years ago. And that was the best decision I've ever made. So I know, and, I, and today I have a walk with him. Today I have a love affair with him. Today I have a relationship with him. Today I have the kingdom benefits. And we want to see the kingdom of God. And you want to see it in its fullness and why don't you do it now, right now? I'm inviting you right now. Every one of you, we're inviting you right now. I believe your hearts are stirred up. Just, just pray with me from your heart. Call on the name of the Lord. Don't worry if you've never prayed before. Just pray with me. 
Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Son. I believe you died and you rose for me. I believe you died. I believe that you took upon all of my sins. I believe you took all my past, sins. present, and future. Past, present. I want to live with you and reign with you and I walk with you forever. With you and, reign with you forever. and I ask that you would fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. And ask that you fill me with your right now, Lord. Right now. Right, right now. now. Put me in the record. Put me in your Lamb's Book of Life. Put me in your record. Lamb's in Jesus' name, I am all yours forever, Lord. Yes, I am Amen. Yours forever. Amen. If you prayed that with all your heart and you meant it, man, woman, whoever you are, you have just received him as your Lord and Savior. You are, you are a kingdom of God. You are a resident of the kingdom of God. Get into a Bible-filled church. Bible is preaching the gospel from Genesis to Revelation. And I'm just so happy that I believe that hundreds and thousands of you around the world has received the Lord Jesus as your Savior. We have a very powerful event if you're in our area and are in the United States or even outside. Do you want to come? We got, it's called Heal the Land. It's a spinoff um, of Line in the Sand. I'm going to be there. Apostle David's going to be there. So we're going to be powerful. We're going to be praying. We believe God's, we are believing God is going to heal the land and is healing the land as we speak. And it's coming up on October 23rd, 2016 on Sunday, which is next month. It's going to be from 5 to 8, but we know there's going to be an outpouring. I'd like to see you there, and I believe you want to come. You want to be a part of this event. All nationalities are coming in uh, on many different religions. We're coming in. We're going to pray. We're going to ask God to have mercy and grace on this nation and on the world. And we believe, as the Bible says in the book of Joel, that God's spirit is, pulling up, is pouring upon all flesh. We believe that. We believe that. And I know you do, too. Be a part of this event. You can call, you can call uh, the, the line, um, the number that's on te television right now. Uh, and we, I believe there's a website. Or you can contact us at 323-933-4055. Uh, uh, or 323-933-4055. Uh, and I just want to thank you once again for spending this wonderful time with Apostle David and me, Pastor Manuel Johnson. We're going to see you here next time online in the sand. God bless you. I just pray God's blessings on your life forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.